So glad that you guys are with us. Welcome, and we're so glad to have you. This week would have been Olympic camp, so we were going to be doing all sorts of uh, events and activities, uh, but we're not going to be getting to do that, uh, which is okay, but we do have a lot of fun planned for you today. We have an Olympic-themed game for you. We have a retro video moment that's one of my favorite, plus we also have an intense sing-off that you will not want to miss. I do want to let you know just a couple things. First of all, I'm feeling better. I was at my house last week doing the show because uh, I tested positive for COVID. I'm okay now and I'm back in my office. I do miss having my dog there. He was uh, kind of nice having him around. But anyway, I'm back. I'm feeling better. Uh, but uh, we're so glad that you're with us. We want to let you know also that this is unfortunately our last week of the camp show. Now we were going to have nine weeks of camp and last week would have been overnight camp, but uh, we have some stuff going on here at the church and at my house that we got to be a part of. I'm moving. Uh, so that is next week. So this will be our last camp show. And uh, it kind of makes me sad. I've enjoyed getting to spend this time with you. Uh, for those of you who have been watching, uh, it's not the same as going to camp, but we're doing the best that we can. And I hope you have enjoyed reliving some of the favorite memories from camp and watching some old memories and uh, looking forward to new memories to come. Uh, next summer. I know a lot of you guys will be starting school in a couple of weeks and I'll miss you. Stay in touch. If you ever want to email us or uh, just give us a shout out on Instagram or Facebook, we always love hearing from campers and uh, we would love it. But this week is Olympic camp. Now we are uh, having a little thing that we do where we wanted kids to send in videos of themselves doing something Awesome. And we have three awesome kids. Now, uh, each of these kids can do different awesome things, and so we want to highlight them, our multi-talented kids. First of all, here is our first awesome kid, with an incredible picture that they drew of a cat. Awesome. That was our friend Madison with an awesome picture of a cat. Now we're going to go on to a girl named Emma Kate who is making awesome things in Minecraft. Check it out. Here you have my floating bumpy house. Finally, our last awesome thing is an incredibly awesome sound that someone can make with their mouth. Let's go to our friend River Jane. River Jane, let's see you be awesome. Hello, today I'm going to be showing you something awesome. I can talk to that. <laughs> Well, those are all of our awesome kids. Congratulations on being awesome. We really, uh, we're really proud of you. You are very awesome. It's official. I have declared it. Now, uh, we want to do uh, a lot of fun things this morning, but or afternoon, or evening, or whenever it is you're watching it. But we are going to first, for one last time together, sing our song for you. This is always like the last thing we do at the end of every summer where we put our arms around each other and we sing, when you're up against the wall, you know that I'll be there for you. So put your arm around your, your brother or your sister or your dog. If you need to get a pillow, you could do that. Or just 
just do that old air hug. Look at your imaginary friends. That's all I got. It doesn't matter. Put your arms around them. Let's sing. I'll be there for you. Sing it with us. Sitting in the rain water on your brain You got a hole in your brain Trying to stay afloat It's got you down I got wind in my cell Rubber boots and a pail I will throw you around Rest assured that I Will never let you drown Cause when you're up against the wall Left you stranded Well, lean on me And together you see I can carry the load Even if we don't Quite understand it Cause when you're up against the wall You know I'll be there for you retro video moment. Now, I want to explain a little bit about this retro video moment. It's one of my favorites uh, because it was a very close call for us here at Camp Straight Street. You see, there is another camp uh, across the way called uh, Camp Crooked Creek. <sighs> Bad guys. You do not like these kids. Uh, they are kind of the opposite of everything we are at Camp Straight Street. And they are a little upset that we keep uh, being voted as the best camp in Birmingham. Uh, they, um, their counselors are mean. Uh, they make the kids just do work. They feed them vegetables uh, for snack shop. Crafts is uh, mostly just manual labor. It's terrible. Uh, and however, they're trying to, um, well, they're trying to steal our camp secrets. And so one summer we had what we believed was a spy from Camp Crooked Creek sneak into our camp. Well, thankfully, we happened to know someone who could help, and it was a ninja, because you always need a ninja in your life. So here is our retro video moment. We hope you enjoy.
was on the internet browsing, reading my celebrity chit chat, and I came across a new a newspaper article from a local camp called Camp Crooked Creek. There are um, our rival. We play them every year in staff dodgeball. Beat them every year, uh, and we found out that they are advertising this new thing called bamboozle. Yeah, our bamboozle. Well, there's no way they could get bamboozle. I wrote it. I created it. It was my brainchild. I birthed it from my mind. I have no idea how they got in because we keep the bamboozle file under lock and key and no one, no one has access to that except our staff. And it, Oh, no. We, we might have, we might have a mole at camp. Now, not, not one of those moles, but like an undercover mole. Uh, a, a, a double agent working for Camp Crooked Creek. If they stole the bamboozle file, that means they might be coming for the camp file. <laughs> Top secret documents that have everything about how we do camp why would you get everything? If someone steals that, there will be no more camp. We gotta find him or her. We gotta find it. We we have to find this mole or camp might cease to exist. And I'll be out of a job. Jonathan came and told me about the mole, the leak. I uh, panicked. I was angry. I was upset. I was in denial. Then I started to actually mourn its loss and uh, finally came to terms with the fact that something had to be done. So I started doing a little research, contacted a few of uh, my fellow uh, camp director friends, looked through the yellow pages, talked to my old man, got some advice, and we decided that our best bet was to call in a spy. So um, after talking to all those people, I heard about a guy named Ewing who was trained in the mountains of East Asia. Supposedly is the master of disguise, something about a uh, keeper of the dragons. I hope he doesn't bring those with him. So I made a call, and he's supposed to be here today. And I don't know, this is the only spy we can afford, so I really hope that he helps. Oh, Ewing. You can't do that to me, Ewing. It's Ewing, the ultimate ninja warrior, master of the dragons. Sure, Mr. Dragons. Um, ultimate ninja warrior, master of the dragons. Right, ultimate warrior ninja. Ult uh, I got it. Um, the, we've brought you here because we have a serious mole issue. I just tried poison. No, not, no, not moles, like, at the ground, like, people moles. Mole people. That is a serious issue. Should, not mole people, but like we have, I, I think one of our counselors or staff members is a double agent for another camp. Okay. I need you to sniff them out. I can do this. Find them and put an end to them. Consider it done. I, and, and put an end to them, meaning like, you know, report it. Don't like, you know. So just bring them to you. That would be great. All right. All right.
freeze! Ah! Get on the ground. <laughs> I've got you. Jonathan. I got him. I'm not just saying. Jonathan, this is your mall. Court? Come on! Or is it court? Kurt! From Camp Cookie Creek! And I would have gotten away with it too if it hadn't been for this meddling spy. Way to go, Ewing. Thank you. It was me the whole time. But wait, if you're Ewing, then who's Ewing? Guess who? It was me the whole time! <laughs> this is insane. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> but after finding out that uh, the mole was Court the whole time, who was actually Kirk, the camp director from across town at Crooked Creek, Jonathan and I were livid, just furious. This is a guy that we hired three months ago. We did our own version of a background check, and I guess we just missed a couple things. So, we banished him from camp. He's never welcome back here. Uh, but, only after we shamed him publicly. Time for us to play the game. Now, for this game, we're going to be playing a very special Olympic game. Uh, now, in the Olympics, there are a lot of very normal sports like swimming uh, in Summer Olympics and gymnastics and running. These are things that are very obvious. We've seen them. However, there are some very strange sports in the Olympics. Not just normal sports, ones that you're like, really? That's a thing? Yeah. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to be playing a game called Olympics Real or Fake. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to show you a picture of an Olympic sport. It's going to be very strange, like, um, uh, like uh, ankle slapping. Mm. And then you have to decide whether you think this is an actual Olympic sport or is fake. Now, it might not be an Olympic sport now. Sometimes there are new Olympic sports and old Olympic sports. So if it's real, that means at one point during the Olympics, it really was an event. Someone actually competed for a medal in this event. Or if it's fake, we completely made it up. Are you ready for the very first one? This is an old, uh, fun field uh, field day game. It is tug of war. Look at those guys. They are pulling with all their might. Now, this doesn't really feel like a whole sport. It'd be kind of odd getting the gold medal in tug of war when other people are dedicating like eight hours a day in a, in a gym doing backflips and tumbling and almost breaking their neck and you just kind of yank on a rope. But it could be real or it could be fake. You decide. So what do you think? Is tug of war real or fake? It is real. It is real. It actually was a real sport. I don't know that it is anymore. I haven't seen it showing up on the, uh, the Olympic channel at my house uh, every four years, but it was a real sport. Now, let's go to another sport. Now, there's some sports that they kind of mix things uh, together. Uh, for example, you have uh, like hockey, and then you have like field hockey. And then you have like polo on horses, and then you have water polo. Here is a kind of a combination of those things, and it is underwater hockey. You really got to hold your breath, but look at that. There's the hockey puck, and they're hitting it around underwater. Is this a real sport in the Olympics, or is it a fake sport? And the answer is it is 100% fake. Yeah, this is, uh, this is not real. Not a real sport. 
Probably best. That sounds like a lot of people are going to drown from playing underwater hockey. It's not a good idea. Here's our next one. Uh, now, we've all seen, like, the shooting. Uh, we know there's, like, bows and arrows. And then in the Winter Olympics, there's, like, the biathlon where they ski and then they pull their guns out. Um, this one's a little different because it involves animals. That's right, animals. I'm talking about actual pigeon shooting. Pigeon shooting. Is this a real Olympic sport, pigeon shooting? Well, lock in your votes because we're about to find out. And the answer is yes, it is a real Olympic sport, pigeon shooting. It's kind of like the old uh, duck hunt game that I used to play when I was a kid on my Nintendo. All right, we're moving on. This is another bird game. Who knew that there were birds involved in the Olympics? Well, here's an actual one, or maybe not. We'll see. It is ostrich racing. Look at that. That man looks like he is on the way to have a good time. Ostrich racing. Oh, man, what a what a vicious sport. Dangerous. Can you imagine the Ben-Hur, the famous book and movie about uh, the chariot races, but it's horses. Instead of horses, it's um, pit, it's um, big, uh, what do they call them, ostriches. Yeah. Is this real? Is it fake? If it's not real, it should be real. I would pay to watch this. Well, lock in your vote, because we're about to find out. Ostrich racing is, in fact, fake. That's a real shame. I would have liked to have seen that. All right, here is our next one. We are headed over to the water for a nice little um, water activity, and it is water skiing. Water skiing. Now, I don't think tubing is, although that would be pretty fun. You just got to stay in the boat as long as possible, maybe. But water skiing, is this a real, real event? Lock in your votes and let's find out. It is real. It is actually real. Wow, water skiing. Who knew? Okay, we are on to the next one. This is uh, something that some people have to do in gym class, although probably not anymore. I would not be good at this one. And it is rope climbing. You got to climb a rope. I don't like climbing ropes. It's like the world's worst ladder. It's like a lazy ladder. Someone said, I'm not making a ladder, just climb up the rope. Sounds painful. All right, is the rope climbing a real Olympic sport? And the answer is, yes, it is real. It's real. Oh, who knew? Maybe they just put the gold medal up at the top and everyone just shimmies on up and whoever grabs it first wins. Maybe who knows? I don't know. All right, now we're moving on to the next one. And this is a vicious game. If you thought ostrich racing was bad, check this one out. I'm talking about shin kicking. Shin kicking. Ouch. Shin kicking. That sounds like a lot of fun. I mean, you got shin guards, so I guess you should be okay. I don't know. Is it real or fake shin kicking? And the answer is, it is fake. No, no shin kicking. I mean, honestly, I guess soccer is kind of like shin kicking, but it's just called soccer. But there is a lot of shin kicking. Who knows? All right, here's the next one. Uh, this one is uh, a little Hamilton themed. It is dueling pistols where people shot at each other. In the Olympics, this is a sport. This should be a sport. Is it a sport? Is it not a sport? Was this ever an Olympic sport? You decide. And the answer is real. It was actually an Olympic sport. It's not anymore because, uh, well, people kept dying. No, not really. Uh, I'm sure they wore protective gear and maybe they shot Nerf guns. I'm not really sure, but it was a real Olympic sport. Let us move on to our next Olympic sport. And we are talking about croquet. Croquet, little, little uh, hit the ball through the little hoop. I've played it. Uh, maybe you've got one at your house. You kick it around your yard. Croquet sounds kind of like a, a kind of a lame sport to win a gold medal in. Sounds like something you play at a picnic. But could it be real? I don't know. Let's find out. It is real. Absolutely, it is real. Or at least it was. I'm not sure they play it much anymore. But I bet it got pretty intense. And now our final one. This is a real sport. I know this is real. Whether it's in the Olympics or not, I'm not sure. And I'm talking about wife carrying. That's right. You just lug your sweetheart over your shoulder and run. Wife carrying. Is this an Olympic sport? I know they do these races all over. I've never been a part of one. But uh, is it real? Let's find out. And the answer is uh, no, it is not real. It is not an Olympic sport. Maybe, uh, maybe next year. Who knows? Anyway, uh, I would love to know what your uh, sports should be. What are some sports that you think uh, should be a part of the Olympics? Uh, comment on, on this Facebook post or uh, send me an email. I'd love to know what you think would be a great uh, Olympic sport. 
I think uh, maybe like milk chugging. That could be fun. Uh, maybe like uh, playing like uh, finger flicking, uh, Beyblades, Pokemon catching. All these are really good ideas. Anyway, they're not great ideas, but they would be fun to watch. All right. Well, that is our game for today. And now we are moving on to our final, most intense sing-off. Now in this sing-off, we have two competitors, and we have Blake Denny and Joseph Falgu. Both of them have an incredible uh, sing-off. Every video seems to raise the bar just a little higher. I think you're going to enjoy this. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, we have Blake Denny singing with his band. We hope you enjoy it. Here is Blake and the Dennys. Check it out. If you know Joseph Falgu, you know that this kid just can't help throwing on a costume and bringing some of his friends along. And you're going to enjoy this. You might not understand it. That doesn't matter. Here it is with a lot of uh, camp Easter eggs, little uh, hidden references to a lot of old camp retro video moments. Enjoy. Here is Joseph's video. Just wait 
know who you think should win blake or joseph email us comment on our video let us know last week we had brody and claire uh competing together singing new york new york and we have another tie between both of them people voting for both of them kind of i guess because they were in the same video but they did a great job brody claire congratulations on tying joseph blake it is up to you who will win Vote, let us know. And now we want to do one final thing. We want to check in with our old friend, Half a Horse. We haven't heard from him in a little while, and we want to see what's going on. I had a chance to talk to him over Zoom, and, uh, well, check out what happened. Uh, Half a Horse, uh, just wanted right. to check in and see how things are going, bud. Yeah, uh, what happened? I'm not allowed. I tried to go into a church, and there was, like, some... Some like security guards or whatever there. They say I can't. Yeah. Come if you were watching the show last week, I uh, I tested positive for COVID. I had it for two weeks. I'm fine now. I tested negative. I'm okay. But uh, my office was uh, shut down. So if you're trying to get in, that's uh, fine. Are we the one who tried to break in? I got uh, no, uh, no. Uh, no, no someone was trying to break in, but we thought it was a criminal. Called the police. Uh, no, no, yeah, I mean, those police, they would they didn't see me, I mean, they didn't see me because I wasn't there, that's why they didn't see me. Hmm, all right. Uh, well, yeah. uh, what, what's going on with you? Um, just been looking for other places to protect, it's not very interesting, gotta say, I wish it was. Yeah. But camp show going good. This is the last one, right? This is the last one, yeah. So, uh, yeah, no more camp show after this. School's starting soon, and mm -hmm. uh, the summer's kind of wrapping up here. Uh, I see. Uh, your background. What? What is that? What is that? Huh? Is that? What is that? Tom Cruise? What was that? I don't see anything. What are you talking about? Yeah. Oh, uh, it's like a some hands coming out of the side of your head. Oh, the him. Hey, that's Sutton. Oh, oh. Wait, who Wait. is this? Uh, Hello, it is me, the great Jean-Luc Pierre. What are you doing here? Well, I saw that you were having a meeting, and I figured I needed to be a part of it as the new owner of Camp Straight Street, or as I like to call it, Camp 2 Electric Boogaloo. It's not Camp 2 Electric Boogaloo. It's well, this is your camp. Why? How are you in this call? How did I you get in? It. I didn't uh, invite you. I have epic hacker skills. Ugh. And I hacked into the FBI's data frame and I grabbed the code, I put it in my internet browser, and I hit enter. You could have done that a whole lot easier. Uh, Pierre, what the, why are you here? Because I felt I needed to be here to 
you know, just I need to be part of the meeting because I am the owner of the property and I don't think you Jonathan own this place. The... This is uh this is still Camp Stray Street, even though we're yeah. not having it this Yeah, time. it is. But like how? I I took it over. Both of you were gone, and so it's mine now. I I that's I, not, I thought to the issue here. We were gonna have a dance off, but then I couldn't get into the to the camp. Well, yeah, that that was an issue. I I showed up and then there was like ropes and stuff, and the ropes told me not to go in, so I didn't. Yeah. So y'all were having a dance off battle for the ownership of uh, Camp Straight Street. Yeah, basically. Well, that was the plan. Yeah. Can you not do it outside? I, I mean, mean, I I suppose we could, but uh, think about that. It, it wouldn't be as funny. What? I mean, you're it'd, going be, it'd be more funny? funny for you to like crash into things because I would be sabotaging you. I mean, I'm not. Don't don't listen to that. Shut up, me. What? Well, okay. Mm, okay. Okay. But yes, so it's uh. You said you said it's back open now, Javu. Yeah, I'm I'm back in my office. It's unlocked now. So we can have the dance off now. Sure. Okay. Uh, okay. Next camp show, we can do it. Uh, Wait, well, there's no next camp show because this is the last one. But you could uh. You could film it, and I'll put it up here on our YouTube channel. Okay. I guess we can do that. I mean, I am okay with it. Um, so this is this is for it all. If I win, I get friends to Electric Boogaloo. Mm -hmm. If you win, it stays camp. Yeah. No, I'm going to win this dance-off for camp. Oh, we're going to have no. camp next year. No, I'm I'm going to win this, and we will still have camp, but it will be called Friends to Electric Boogaloo Camp. But what will the kids do at Friends to Electric Boogaloo Camp? It's so specific that cannot last eight weeks. Uh we will have baguette making, French revolutions. No, that doesn't um, work. Uh, we, hey, half a horse, you're gonna have to beat him in a dance off, please. Yeah, um, no, don't worry. That was my all right. We could let them eat cake all yeah. day, every day. Thank you. Um, let's, uh, let's settle this on the dance floor, Pierre. Okay. I am ready. You're going down. All right. Half a horse. Pierre, you guys got this. We do. I do got this. Thank you, Jonathan. We're behind you, Pierre. I mean, half a horse. We're behind you. Yep, you are. You are right behind me. I mean, yeah, I am right behind you. There you go. All righty. Right, well, we'll settle this. Settle it next week. I'm, go I'm going to win. You cannot oh, defeat me, half that. horse. All right. I can. Thanks. Uh -oh. Well, hey, that does it for us for this week, and that does it for us for the summer. We hope that you have a great school year. Stay safe. We cannot wait till next summer. We will be having twice as much fun. We're going to pack it in. All the fun that we had this year, we've saved. We've packed it up. We didn't even open it up. The seal is still nice and fresh, so we've got fresh, unexpired fun that we will be using next year. So next year will be the summer of double the fun. We're going to have all the fun of 2020 and 2021. That's 41 funds. That's a lot of funds. All right. Have a great summer and uh, have a great school year. I miss you. Uh, if you ever want to hang out, give us a call. Message us on Instagram. We'd love to see your face, talk to you, drive by and honk at us. We miss you and uh, have a great school year. Thank you guys so much for watching The Camp Show. I'm Jawu, and we'll see you later. Bye.